Good morning, everyone. I'm not in Montana right now. This is definitely sunny San Diego, California, where we've been invited to have exclusive access to the brand new sixth generation 4Runner. I'm getting ready to head out to a ranch that's not too far from here, where we'll get to walk around, touch, poke, feel, sit in, and experience the brand new sixth generation 4Runner. We'll have exclusive access to looking at it both from a spec side to a build side. Rochelle and Kurt Williams are already on their way there. I'm gonna catch up to them hopefully and meet them out at the ranch, not too far from here. And we're gonna crawl our way around that sixth gen. We've had so many experiences with Forerunners throughout X Overland's history that we are very thrilled to be able to see the next best version of the Forerunner. While we drive out, how about you take a look at some of our history with the Forerunner? Hey, good morning, X Overland fans. We are in a very special spot. We are somewhere really close to Mexico. I can't tell you where, but it's like right over there. We have a superstar <laughs> team to get to do a walk around of the sixth generation Forerunner. We have two colors to play with and two totally different grades. Mm -hmm. On the left, the blue and heritage blue is the limited. And then directly behind us is the trail hunter version yeah. of the sixth generation Forerunner. I'm excited about that one. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I think everybody's excited that about that yeah, one. Yeah. Cool. yeah. What's the color? Everest. I really like it, especially with the bronze wheels. Mm. I think it really looks nice. I All like right. it. Well, let's go yeah. for a closer look. Right. We'll work our way around and okay. uh, look you got at the your things tape we like to see. I got a tape measure. You ready to okay, go? Good. We're ready okay. in case we need to measure anything. We're going to let you two engineers hash it out here. <laughs> okay, sixth generation Forerunner, Trail Hunter package. We're going to spend our most time here because we're familiar with this package. So we want to see what takes a Forerunner and turns it into something special over the Trail Hunter Tacoma. Some of the things are similar. We have the same raised air intake that's on the Tacoma. And first time ever on a Forerunner. Yeah. Never I mean, seen that before. It's gonna be a little different, right? Cause the window profile is curvature different shape a little difference. bit, right? So it's, I don't think you could steal this and stick it on your Tacoma. Probably not. But same idea, same uh, effect on your truck, right? Both raising your air intake for water fording and dust intrusion and all the things. Clean, cool air. Clean, cool air. Same wheels as the, the Tacoma. So what things would we notice from a fifth gen to this all new sixth gen? That's kind of what a lot of people want to hear about. Right, right. Why would I take my fifth gen and send it away to drive this sixth gen 4Runner? Mm -hmm. There's a ton of reasons, honestly. This is a whole new truck, right? Same things we saw with the Tacoma from the 2023 20, to the 2024, new truck. But the difference between from the fifth gen 4Runner to the sixth gen 4Runner is obviously the new drivetrain, the new engine, new 8 speed transmission. <laughs> I'll never get the number correct. But where are we at? Three, 326. 326 horsepower. 465. 465 torque. It's not new drivetrain, new engine. Uh, so what else are we changing from our fifth gen? Obviously we have the TNGAF frame, which means we have a bunch of accessories that we can stick on, like mm -hmm. the rock rails, yeah. right? Without modifications. It's length and it's wheelbase. Right, that's a big one. It is. That'll change approach angles, departure angles, breakover angles, things will change. Still a SUV, four doors. Second back seat, second row. Uh, let's keep going around. No change in the back, still a multi-link suspension, four link with the track bar, pan hard bar, however you look at it. Yep. Very similar architecture to previous models. The wheelbase on the Tacoma is a little bit longer because of the longer bed. Mm -hmm. uh, I love this feature of all the new trucks is the rails on the top are already have inserts for attaching whatever it is, accessory, roof rack you want on here. Obviously ARB, in partnership with Toyota has developed accessories for the Trail Hunter specifically. So we have an ARB roof rack on top of this guy from the factory, right off the floor. Okay, let's keep going around. As everyone knows, and we're all very excited about, there we go. We have a roll down rear window. It's there. Happy life. Yep. Rest Happy assured. wife, right? Mm -hmm. Groceries go in, right? Or your gear, get in and out of a cooler, grab some recovery gear. In a Doggy hurry. breathing room, right? Mm -hmm. All the things. Thank you, Forerunner. Thank you, Toyota. Um, obviously, this is a hybrid model, so we have some batteries we don't have in the regular iForce. What's really exciting about the connection to the Trail Hunter, though, is the air compressor. Right, yeah. Here we go. We have air compressor right in the back end. 
Um, and we played with this a lot on the Tacoma Trail Hunter. It has a auto air set feature, of both airing up and airing down. That's Which is really cool time-wise exactly. to be able to plug in like a four hose system, tell it where you want to go and walk away. It's really nice. It's nice to be able to dial in. I want 20 PSI, beep, 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 beep. I attach it to my wheel. It starts to do its thing and you go on to the next one while you're doing whatever else. That was, it was actually very fun to use on the Tacoma. Cool, I haven't played with that much, so I'm excited great. to see it. I was impressed. No, and that may be a good time to talk about, there are a lot of trim levels, nine of them. There are so many trim levels with the 4Runner. That's pretty exciting to see the variety that you're gonna be able to pick when you go to the dealership and say, well, I want this version, and not that version. So nine trims. Nine trims. Two row, three row, some cool packages. Yep, Trail Hunter will not get the third row. But all the other options will be, exist, or there will be a third row option for other trim levels. Cool. There's two inverter outlets in the 4Runner. There's both one in the second row and one all the way here in the back. It's, it's a single 2400 watt inverter that's supplied in two locations, right? One in the rear, one right in the center console for the second row. But that's a, that's a great output for a lot of the accessories you'd be using on the back. Maybe a blender or you know, little devices charging things that you don't have a USB for. Okay, we made it out of the back, right? We have a roll down rear window, we have an air compressor, we have an inverter, we have our future 12 volt connection for our fridge. Mm -hmm. And power buttons. Okay, uh, upon inspection, the sixth generation 4Runner in the Trail Hunter package has a 9.5 rear differential, not the 8.2 that we see on other trim packages or other models. Look under here. So on the 8.2, the pumpkin cover, the diff cover right here would actually be smooth. And on the 9.5, you see there's a divot right in there. So that's how we can tell that this is the larger diff. It is a bigger rear differential. So the nine and a half, I mean, just as size implies, it's a little bit bigger ring gear, just means it's got a little bit stronger potential. Bigger tires in the future, I guess, is kind of what the end user would look at. Yep. Doesn't change whether they can be locked or not. Both the 8.2 and 9.5 can have the electric locker because we see that in a lot of different packages in the Toyota platform. Right. Let's work our way back at the front. Yeah. Um, again, Trail Hunter edition, right, Kurt? We have the ARB Old Man Emu suspension, mm -hmm. just like on the Tacoma. Um, obviously, a huge improvement over anything fifth gen. So tuned for this chassis, all set up, it's specific to this model. Yeah, different than a Pro Shock, mm -hmm. right? That we found out on a TRD Pro, it's a Fox Shock. This being the Overland version, the Trail Hunter mm -hmm. version, it's tuned more to be a load carrier, not right. a jumper, not a flyer. Remember, go fast, no, go far. Again, we're in Trail Hunter package, right? So we have that same rigid fog light that's color changing, just like in the Tacoma. Mm -hmm. Definite wider stance. We mentioned the wheel offset and the fender flares. Visually, it's, it. I mean, visually it's probably looks bigger than the actual change. Right. But it feels bigger. That aggressive look because of the tapered bumpers. You kind of have that step up multi-tier. You really time. can get your tires right on things that we've never seen out of the previous models. That's a lot of clearance. That's a lot of 333 inch tire that is unimpeded by the bumper. Yeah, loving that look. It's good there's rock rails because if you can crawl onto it, you gotta come off. <laughs> you gotta be able to get off. Yep. Yeah, should we pop the hood real quick? So, familiar engine, Kurt, I Force Max, We've turbocharged seen this. four cylinder hybrid. Mm -hmm. With the hybrid, we have a battery, mm -hmm. right? That battery is somewhere in this truck, it's out there in the back. Above the frame rails is what I understand. Above the frame rails, so it won't get in the way, we've been told, and we've looked at it. Yeah. Suspension's gonna be fine. But also, I think we'll come up with solutions for, as we mentioned earlier, drawers and other accessories. Space, yeah. space. it won't be that big of an issue. Manufacturers and aftermarket will get around that with all the things we love to have in the back. Yeah, we'll be able to build whatever. I think this is the thing no one has talked about, center of gravity. Mm -hmm. Do you think a hybrid truck will have actually a lower or a steeper rollover angle than a non-hybrid? Because of that extra weight back there. Yeah, it's an interesting. And, and then and it's down low. The bias of it too, it's in the it's back. In the rear. So we offsetting a lot of engine. Is it getting a closer and to a 50-50 bias? It'd be, I, be fun to play with. You know, a lot of people are concerned that this whole hybrid thing with the 4Runner is a bad idea. How do you feel? Not that worried about it. Toyota's been at it for a lot of years and proven that they can build reliable systems. So the trade-off of the added power, which we all enjoy driving yeah, a lot, right? It, to me, it's worth it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you. Again, Toyota fan, obviously, but Toyota's been building hybrid engines for a very long time. I'm excited to see how this thing drives 
Uh, I know the hybrid and the Sequoia was a ton of fun to drive. Right, and they've been around for a lot of years in the hybrid world, Toyota has, so we expect this to have very similar longevity. And we all know everyone misses or is going to miss the V6 4.0 that was in the 4Runner for I, a lot of years. It's I think a great they will motor. until they drive it. I'm with you. I'm with you. I, I'm excited I, when we get the opportunity to finally drive it. It will be a blast. We're not That's tipping why cars you wouldn't over. Give the keys. <laughs> you know, Kurt, this is the first time I'm actually going to sit in it. So, like, this is it right here. Sweet. What do you think? You're soaking it all in, what do you I, think? I, I like it. I mean, it's good seats. This, uh, the Trail Hunter has the air conditioned seats, I think. I got all the ventilation here, the which ventilation will be really seats. nice. What do we see in T-Case wise? There was a lot of discussion, 400 owners were wondering, is it gonna be full-time, part-time? Right. What are we seeing? Well, what we have here is we have a selectable four-wheel drive. Okay. So we're not in the full-time. I think we saw a spec sheet. There is, and maybe that Limited is the one that's a full-time four-wheel drive. In the Limited, you get a full-time four-wheel drive system. So not a selectable four high, four low, or two high, four high. You now have full-time four-wheel drive in high, and then a full-time four-wheel drive locked in high, right? Which is a center differential lock. So you go from all-time four-wheel to a center diff locked four-wheel drive, and then finally all the way to a low four-wheel drive. But the Trail Hunter comes with a selectable four high, four low, two high. Integrated trailer brakes, that's good. I love having that on a truck that you don't have to install later. Mm -hmm. Four aux switches. Sweet. What, what, what? I'm I love- just, just seeing those now. This is beautiful. I love aux switches. You know, Tanner and I are always building and adding things in to control all the other accessories we're gonna add to our overland truck and without having to put in new sets of switches, mm -hmm. keeps the dash so much cleaner and we're not gonna have extra things. A lot better form factor and you already have your light bar and fog light, so that's really four additional yeah. auxiliary switches. Uh, Trail Hunter specifically has the camera systems, right? So we, if we look at the mirrors, there are camera under the mirrors, there's a camera out front, there's a camera out back, and I see all my buttons down in here be able to select the views in my dash. Talk to me about buttons, because I'm seeing one that we all mm -hmm. love to have when mm -hmm. you buy an OE vehicle, mm -hmm. and that's that rear locker. Right there, baby. So being a selectable four-wheel drive with four low, to have that rear locker is that one little game changer that gets you up the hill on that loose terrain that you wouldn't do with an open diff. Totally agree. Excited to see that on this package. One more switch, though, on the Trail Hunter. Here it's called a stabby bar which is not something you do in prison. Like, no, that's no, not that kind of thing. Stabilizer is what that mm -hmm. stands for. Or they also call it the SDM. What's that? Stabilizer Disconnect, Disconnect mechanism. mechanism. Right. Right. So you'll see that in manuals. And what this does for your truck is it unlocks some more flex. So again, Trail Hunter version with the Stabilizer Disconnect. Little more articulation possible. Yep. And not just a little, we saw not on this platform yet, but right. some other Toyota platforms, the difference that makes. It's a pretty substantial ability to keep tires on the ground, which is what matters. I've seen people reporting a significant change by having a disconnectable stabilizer bar. Mm -hmm. Okay, if I were to get put myself in the back seat. Let's, let's do it. Yeah, so six foot one. It's livable. I'm still not touching the top. Uh, I tend to be kind of tall in the torso and shorter in the leg in that general sense, but. I want to say too, from a female, female, oh, yeah, female perspective, I've been letting you two go at it because yeah, I let's love, hear, hearing, let's hear what I love hearing all the engineer talk. But a lot of families ask us, you know, like Tacoma or Foreigner. So for like a family vehicle, which is why I think the Foreigner has gotten so popular with Overlanders over the years is because it does give you that, if you have one vehicle that is your daily driver, you can have two car seats in the back. You can also load out the back. You can put a fridge back there, you can put your tent on top. And it allows you, yeah, that versatility, especially for the family aspect of it. So, um, Tacoma's I like that probably it, good for, you know, like uh, a pair of people and a dog. Totally. But when you start to go to four people or even two it large start, adults and two little tight. adults, yep. It gets, yeah. Yep. Now you're so, a forerunner. Exactly. Yep. So, yeah, I'm stoked. I, you know, as a <laughs> coffee lover and mm. someone who's in the front seat a lot like you are, I look at cup holders. Obviously, everything else that the vehicle does, all of the off-road capabilities, very important, reliability, but I'm also looking for those creature comforts have that make life really easier. Have you sat I have not. You you gotta all find right, I'm gonna front. do it. Mom test. And the mom test is really how quickly can you reach your hand to the back seat to like 
stop it or reach for a snack, right? <laughs> this is nice. I dig it. I like the piping and the stitching on the seat. It's like a little yeah, nuance. I mean, you know, it doesn't totally. add any functionality of the vehicle, but it sure looks cool. Yeah, this is great. All right, Kurt, your turn. All right. I don't think you've sat in here yet. I haven't yet. I'll put this down so you don't hit your head like Clay does. I'll Thank be nice. you. I do it just for fun now. No, no, yeah. <laughs> you get out and you raise it up a little higher. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, great. I do like those seats have nice yeah. bolsters. So you kind of just feel like you're right in nestled in. I could see that uh, many hours in the seat as we often do on exo trips mm -hmm. and have over the years in forerunners this is going to be a comfortable ride i see some fun tests in our future mm -hmm. hopefully so while we're here this close to mexico we got to look at forerunner trd pro which is definitely different than the trail hunter some things similar like this cut on the bumper these fenders the wheel offset similar to the trail hunter in fact maybe the same but different box shocks Adjustable, there's a little click, click, click there. Three-way adjustable on the front and the rear. Uh, what else did we notice? Similar fog lights and light bar, but some different selectable buttons on the inside. So we're not sure what that is about. Definitely a hood scoop, which looks sweet. Right, iForce Max, same transmission, same engine. No, uh, no, no uh, roof rack, so it has no a sunroof. Roof rack. It has a sunroof. No elevated air intake, different than this Trail Hunter. That cool TRD steering wheel, definitely a different feel than the Trail Hunter. Trail Hunter to me, like just first initial impression of the new Trail Hunter 4Runner is like adventure. It's like ready for a lot of the things that we do traditionally. Whereas the TRD Pro feels a little more like sporty, high speed. This kind of makes me uh, want to get down to the Baja 1000. We're not too far away. We got all the modes. We got high, two, high four and four low rear diff locker yes thank you uh stabilizer disconnect check so kind of on the drive systems it's going to be very very similar to the trail hunter except for suspension right it's right. really it's, the difference is fox to arb or right. old, old man emu. old man emu more like a load long distance load capacity a little yeah, higher I'm sure payload. They're totally tuned differently versus like a sport performance yeah. getting some air under the tires and the ability to adjust like right. on this one you can actually go click 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 i want a position one position two position three which for is, which is your a cool setup thank you toyota for putting us up here for a really fun event we now have spent time with the sixth generation forerunner mm -hmm. So with our experiences, we know some things. We don't know all things. We did see pre-production models. Maybe, is it past prototype, would you say? It's past prototype. I think that's that's still a very prototype. Pretty prototype. Model, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I think we're still very prototype, in my opinion. Yeah, we'll see. But what we saw, we can hopefully answer some of the questions that all of you out there in the community have been wanting to know. So we are thrilled to be able to share these things. Some of them are not production finalized numbers even some things on our chart that were given to us that were blank mm -hmm. so we can't answer all of them but we can answer some one of the questions that everybody asks what is the engine power change right what is fifth gen what do i get with sixth gen so i force non-hybrid 278 horsepower 317 torque okay i force max big change 326 horsepower that's like a combined, right? It's the engine plus Correct. the electric yeah, that's, motor, that's right? combination. So you combine horsepowers to say, mm -hmm. okay, my engine puts out X, my hybrid motor puts out Y, mm -hmm. X plus Y is 326 horsepower mm -hmm. and 465 pound, pound feet, feet of torque. That's very different. Yeah. And I think we feel mm -hmm. it in the pedal, don't we? Mark difference. I mean, we should, we haven't driven it yet. <laughs> Not in that one, we've driven others with the platform, yes, but yeah, yeah. Right. same stuff. So we're expecting. Yeah, yep, we're yeah. expecting yeah. it. Yeah. The Aishin 8-speed transmission. Yep. Expecting handling and power delivery to be similar. Yeah, there would be no reason to think differently. Yeah. Towing capacity, fifth gen, five-ish, 5,000-ish. So sixth gen, now up to 6,000 pounds of gas. Yeah. Okay. Does that change in the different motors? I don't think so. It's the same towing capacity. Well, I've got one. Will there be a manual transmission? Mm. Oh, that's a good question. Could cover that one based on what we've seen to date and what we've been told. No, no plans for a manual mm -hmm. transmission. Standard eight-speed transmission across the line. Yep. Yep. Okay, I've got a fun one. This is from Dright83. Asked this question. Drivetrain and what took so long? I think we've hammered out the drivetrain pretty good. Yep. What took yeah. so long? We don't want to mess up something that's amazing right? Okay. And we know Toyota has a reputation for reliability that is well-earned. Yep. They're not going to mess that up. 
And I think that's why we wait so long for model changes when we see Toyota vehicles, because they don't rush anything, no. which means we get a good product. Yep, okay. reliability is first and foremost. Yeah, that's fair. Mileage, I think the, I didn't see we a mileage We won't know number. mileage, mm -hmm. nope. This is a good, uh, while well, we touched on it, but uh, I'll, I'll just introduce it, we'll make it quick. Yep. Jetsy Bruce asks, or uh, Jetsy Bruce mentions, hopefully a no hybrid version. We talked about it, there will be yep. a standard answer I-Force. Is. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yep, answer is yes. Here's uh, HHE2001, which I know is a longtime Toyota and Land Cruiser fan, says, I hope it has dual lockers and a sway bar disconnect. I think we've hammered that out, mm -hmm. rear locker and sway bar it disconnect. Has, yep. It has two lockers, the, the windows lock. That's true, we did play at the window lock. Yep. We yeah. were triple locked yeah. at one point. We're being facetious about that, we know. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, we'd love a front Troll. locker. We're Troll. not seeing that yet, but the rear locker is there and the sway bar disconnect is there yep. on mm -hmm. some models. We don't know if every model. I think yet. TRD yeah. Pro, I know TRD, TRD Pro, Pro and Trail Hunter. It may mm. show up in others or be an option. Right, we haven't seen them yet, so we don't know. Chris Doe Park, this one is one of the people that asked this question, how is it in a different segment than the new Land Cruiser. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the new LC250 in the United States market, undeniable, it's a very similar market, very similar dimension, shared platform. Uh, big difference you're gonna see from most forerunners is it's gonna be a full-time four-wheel drive, and all of the Land Cruiser 250, all three of the grades that we're gonna see first year are iForce Max, no standard iForce in those, where the forerunner, you have, what do we decide, nine yeah, different nine options, great options, including most being part-time and the availability of the non-hybrid. Right. So right. a little bit different. So there's there's gonna be mm -hmm. kind of some overlap and some different segments. It's gonna be a lot of options to choose from moving forward. I'm looking forward to us using this vehicle. Oh yeah, Can't All wait. of them. And I think, all, I think it's gonna exactly, be all of them. All yeah, of exactly. Them. Yeah. One, one of each happening. for Cruiser Kurt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cruiser Kurt will take one of each and then we're gonna share them amongst each other. But we're looking forward to putting it to work and we're glad to share that information with you. And as soon as we have one of our own, you will see more information about the sixth generation. Kurt, thank you. Michelle, thank you. You're Lots of fun to experience the sixth gen Forerunner together. Uh, I'm excited for us one day to drive this thing and take it on an expedition. Likewise. That's coming. Yes. It will come, so stay tuned. The 6th Gen will be at the hangar at some point. I don't know when. We're just believing it's going to happen. Yeah, exactly. Maybe at this not. point, it's like, <laughs> it must. What do they call it? I'm uh, willing it into willing existence. It in, yeah. yes, yes, yes. So stay tuned. I'm manifesting it. That's what I mean. Yeah, exactly. We manifest that future. Anyway, we're looking forward to having the 6th Gen in our house, building it up to take on a future expedition. A lot like the Trail Hunter. If you hadn't seen yet, our adventures in the Tacoma Trail Hunter. Mm -hmm. Go over here, click on this thing that isn't really here right now, but the YouTube editors say they'll put it there. <laughs> and then you'll get to watch us mess around and Rochelle yeah. take the Tacoma Trail Hunter on fun adventures. It's awesome. I think you're forgetting one thing. Like and subscribe. <laughs> he was forced to do it. Here. He was forced to do it. We will see you back in Montana. <laughs> Bye.